So, uh, are we good with the uh, audience? What we are looking for? Only we are yeah, having. I, I, yeah, at, at now we are having 13 uh, attendees with us, but uh, I guess uh, we can we can have uh, more of them as mm -hmm. we can start the session as of now, but uh, slowly and gradually people will join. I hope so. OK, fantastic. Okay, fantastic. Uh, so good morning to all of you. I hope you all are from the same region from where I am. And if you are from other region, then good afternoon and good evening with respect uh, with respective region. So I hope you peop all people are aware uh, aware with respect to the topic what uh, we are covering uh, covering uh, today. So uh, should I consider that you all people are aware with the topic and you have prepared at least something or you have uh, you had a look on uh, on some some kind of uh, literature uh, with respect to the topic what we are covering should i consider uh, such kind of <clears throat> uh, uh, ex uh, valid expectation of mine I hope you people have gone through with respect to domain driven design and I have already uh, uh, rendered two session on this topic uh, topic and today today as already published that we are going to uh, consider some kind of uh, base practice practice or you can say based uh, better habits uh, to to carry uh, carry out domain uh, domain driven implementation in in a uh, in a good manner or you can say in a manner uh, which actually it should be right so uh, as i mentioned uh, the title uh, uh, title is uh, base practices and domain driven design design and uh, if you people are uh, unaware of my name then definitely i should uh, i should introduce myself i am a big yes and i am uh, since uh, 3 years i am into this org uh, into this organization at dear nolders and currently now in nastag right <clears throat> so uh are you all good with respect to uh, with respect to kicking off the session yes or no i think that will give me sense that we all are awake should i go um, uh, initiate trigger the session i just want inter interaction nothing else no one is re responding i are you uh, are you people uh, able to hear me or i want to am i audible yeah because you are audible to me and i hope so that you are audible to the attendees as well guys please uh, can we have your response uh, over mic i i i know that See. you are responding yeah see um, uh, my expectation is simple uh, simple please be involved nothing else right so if you uh, only if you will involve i think you will uh, you will have some takeaway from the session that is the only thing i am not forcing you learn but you just involve your involvement will give you the learning by its own so that's the only expectation i am having i hope uh, i'm not over expecting right Yes, sure, surely not. Uh, guys, uh, it's in request that uh, instead of reacting, you can please be a uh, vocal on mic. That would be uh, greatly appreciated from all of you. I agree. Still nobody is saying even yes or no. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. Sure. yeah. Thank right. you. Fantastic. Right. Okay. So, uh, uh the top agenda is to understand the base practices some of base practice uh, it is impossible to cover all the base practices but some of the base practices let me cover in this session uh, session so agenda with respect to uh, this base practices to cover this many of our uh, topics ubiquitous language bounded context aggregates entity and value object. These are the five things I want to uh, uh, cover with respect to uh, what should be done uh, done in a right way to implement or to control or to carry out the uh, domain driven design implementation. Right. So 
uh, I'm sure there are few people who are, who have attended a uh, few people in the in this session who have attended my previous session with respect to the domain driven design. Can anyone uh, explain me what is uh, explain me these terms? Let us start with the ubiquitous language. Anybody knows what is what it is with respect to the previous session? Anyone? Even guesswork will also work uh, fine for me. Anyone? Otherwise, I will start asking by name. <laughs> okay, so uh, ubiquitous language. Ubi ubiquitous language, uh, as you can say, it's a fundamental need of this domain uh, and uh, design where we we need to uh, we need to have common terminology across all the stakeholders all, all the st stakeholders so one language for one uh, one bounded context right so we should uh, it should not be like that someone is someone is uh, uh, mentioning a compound interest and someone is mentioning uh, cumulative index though they are having eventually a same meaning so if we want to refer to some functionality it should be referred by one name or one identity or one uh, reference so <clears throat> so uh, moral of the story we should have some language which 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 has one meaning with respect to all the stakeholders make sense any clarification needed in this definition or if any input uh, from you people anyone anu jakanksha kajal manish manjri i am just uh, referring name right so uh, so see uh, need of ubiquitous language is nothing but it's uh, it's uh, remove the confusion and ambiguity in uh, across the stakeholder uh, stakeholder right well, right second uh, se uh, second point we are going to consider bounded context anyone who wants to uh, provide the understanding of bounded context uh, in with respect to the previous sessions anyone Boss, you people are completely uh, non-interactive. It looks like someone have uh, kept you at gunpoint. <laughs> See, uh, we we want to enjoy this one hour till twelve thirty. You just enjoy the session. I'm not uh, asking you learn anything. Just enjoy, interact. That's it. Nothing else. Anyone? Sujit. Sujit, are you there? Sujit Vikas. Yeah, Rivanshu, kya karna hai? Nobody is in, uh, even responding to my my uh, uh, call. Sujit, are you there? If you are attending the uh, session. Rishika. Yes, log login karke chale gaye, lagta hai. I don't think so. Uh, Rishika, are you there? Uh, I, I guess we can just hear your voice once. Uh, maybe you cannot respond or maybe you certainly you don't have the certain knowledge about this particular topic, but at least you can say that you, you, you are not aware about it. And this is uh, not for Rishika only. If guys, uh, I ask everyone. each from each and every one of you that please do respond. I guess uh, uh, at least to the presenter because see, uh, we cannot talk and talk and talk just to a you know a screen. So. <laughs> Okay, Rishika has uh, responded that she's trying to okay. speak, but uh, the mic is not working for her. Okay, you can you can text. There is no issue at all. You can text.
I think it looks like that most of people have just logged in and, and then uh, uh, they are away from the desk. It looks like. Right. Okay. Uh, so uh, let us move to the next uh, uh, next point that is bounded context. Bounded context. Uh, it is a it is some uh, it is something kind of a boundary uh, or boundary you can say or scope within what some kind of some kind of Im uh, business implementation happen right right uh, it uh, yeah, but uh, though it is a uh, boundary but it it has to be aligned with the core uh, uh, core domain of uh, core domain of uh, 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 core domain of business, business, right? So it might be part of subdomain or it might be part of domain. But it, if you are considering bounded context, it should have some logical boundary with respect to uh, with respect to particular term or with respect to particular functionality, right? And where we have only one ubiquitous lang language, right? Perfect. Next one, aggregate. Anyone about aggregate? Again, I'm pretty sure nobody is listening yeah. to me. Uh, anybody is aware of what is uh, aggregate? Yes or no? Is uh, that is also fine for me? No. No. Okay. Okay, uh, perfect. So uh, again, I, I recommend that you just uh, after uh, means whenever you have time, you just uh, go through the uh, the earlier session of mine, or even you can Google with respect to the domain driven design. All this definition will be far more clear than the uh, uh, than now because today I'm not going to cover all those things in detail. I'm just giving you definition because I need to explain some kind of best practices, right? Right. So yep, agri sure. yeah. So ag uh, ag aggregate aggregate is Kind of, uh, if, you, if I will go with the uh, uh, technical term, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a group of entity and uh, value object which fulfill some kind of business functionality within some scope, right? So that is aggregated. This is something. Uh, some. Uh, this is. Uh, this is something, which gives the implementation of business functionality with respect to particular bounded context this is and this is what called aggregate and it contains definitely uh, uh, some entities and value objects right make sense make sense or some more clarity is required within next two three minutes because i yes, don't want yes. to spend much time yeah i don't want to spend much time on these things right next is entity i hope you people are able to uh, see the definition of ent entity right See, basically, yes. entity uh, entity holds some data plus some business uh, business logic uh, logic. It it is uh, it it is it is uh, it is nothing different than uh, nothing more different than the uh, normal implementation uh, normal project development when we are defining the entities. It is similar uh, similar like that only. And here uh, we need to uh, have some identity with uh, with respect to this entity. So in domain and driven identity is must with respect to each entity, right? So uh, that is uh, that is required. So in if you, if you want in real scenario, what kind of entities entities we, you can consider? Definitely, uh, we can consider, uh, for example, product entity, order entity. Even uh, you can consider the animal entities. So these are uh, they are the uh, there's uh, something which uh, represents some kind of unique community, right? product is a community order is kind of community a animal is kind of community it provides the uniqueness uh, unique community right so that is the entity make sense yes yes fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> okay value object value object is most simple thing it holds some values with respect to uh some kind of attribute right uh, uh, right so for uh, you can consider that okay uh, if you want to store address so address is a, uh, you can consider address as a kind of value value object so value object are instantiated to represent element of the design that we care about only for what they are or not who or which they are it's simple straightforward if uh, if you uh, if you uh, if you want uh, if you want uh, the uh, full name uh, full name 
a value object of full name then it will store that first name second name last name that is it so uh, it doesn't have any uh, any any unique uh, unique id or nothing it stores some values only it has it has no state it has no history it has nothing it stores some kind of values only which in turns utilized by entity or aggregate or some uh, some in some bigger scope right make sense yeah let us move further then right so uh, eventually this uh, we are going to cover five base practices with respect to this uh, five terms right first one ubiquitous language right so um, by name says whenever you are implementing ubiquitous language please mark the first first practice uh, practice or first consideration you should have is this there should not be any ambiguity in terminology as i already mentioned that compound interest and cumulative index though they are same by meaning but you have to pick one terminology when you are defining uh, the ubiquitous language right when you are considering ubi ubiquitous language because if it is not defined then uh, then it might be possible that uh, one of stakeholder may have some different definition than uh, uh, than what it should be so far as the implementation final implementation part is concerned so yeah anyone wants to speak something uh, okay right so uh, so first base uh, uh, first point is with respect to uh, with respect to do's is be be precise and be unambiguous with respect to whatever terms we uh, define in ubiquitous language right right now and next fact is supposed to be follow see basically so far as ubiquitous language and with uh, whatever the i am explaining in this slide it is mostly related to a product owner or project manager or uh, this is relatively less to a technical person whether it's a developer or whether uh, whether is he or she is a qa part so but, but they are supposed to be very very much uh, involved in uh, in uh, with respect to ubiquitous language but why uh, uh, when you are implementing or practicing or uh, implementing or controlling project manager and product owners are more uh, supposed to be more involved in that uh, right so now second point supposed to be a, all the stake stakeholders should be part of while defining the terms for entire life cycle of the development and delivery right so why all the stakeholder uh, are required when you defining uh, right so uh, let us uh, let us guess who uh, for any development uh, development uh, pr project who can be who can be the stakeholder uh, or, or end user technical uh, technical team maybe uh, maybe qa maybe developer maybe architect uh, business and business analyst uh, business analyst or business owners so those are the people who are who, who can be considered as a stakeholder and they are going to use all these terms during the entire development phase so one of the practice supposed to be whenever you are defining the terms uh, in uh, based way all the stakeholders supposed to be part of that or most of the stakeholders supposed to be part when you are defining and defining that uh, uh, terms for uh, uh, terms for ubiquitous language so <clears throat> normally i have mentioned that developer domain expert end users whoever are, uh, are going to uh, be involved in in <clears throat> involved in in, uh, in this development uh, development and uh, development uh, uh, part development or i you can say uh, in any way connected with the project supposed to be part while the uh, defining the definitions right right <clears throat> right please mark <clears throat> so once uh, once you uh, you have defined uh, you have defined uh, the terms those term has to be uh, a bridge between all the phases 
all the phases. Uh, so, uh, so what what are those phases? We can uh, we can consider uh, we can consider uh, them require uh, requirement gathering, requirement settling, uh, definition of archi architectural definition, uh, this. Uh, I, are designing the architectural part, physical implementation. I mean to say coding, uh, coding part, even testing part. So all those are the phases of uh, of the, uh, of domain driven implementation, right? So if if we have uh, we have any ubiquitous language, it has to be bridged between all the phases. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. So it has to be bridged in all the phases. So, uh, so again, it has to start from BRD and till testing or kind of in, uh, 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 till the accepting from the user. So B, while BRD, the term should follow uh, follow what we have defined UML. So for example, if we are, if we are, <clears throat> if, we are if, we, if, we, if we have some kind of business requirement which creates the account, account, right? So if any state diagram, any uh, sequence diagram, any uh, use case uh, use case diagram uh, supposed to be created with respect to the create account, it should be uh, all this design so, should be should be done with respect to create account. It should not have uh, that uh, create user create something else. If we have already de defined uh, defined that we need to deal with the account. It should be create account, whether it's a state diagram, a sequence diagram, use case diagram, whatever it is. While we are coding or we are doing a physical implementation, <clears throat> our HTTP request should uh, go with respect to create a diagram. Our service supposed to be named with respect to create diagram. Our uh, all the artifact with respect to testing or QA supposed to be uh, supposed to be with respect to the create account. Create account. It should not have different terminology when we are dealing uh, uh, dealing with a ubiquitous language for the development purpose makes sense any confusion on any uh, anything which uh, uh, which is uh, which you find that missing with respect to this point yes or no is fine for me Okay, okay. Let me uh, go to the next stuff. Okay, so uh, we have considered it should be a bridge to all the phases of the uh, project. So, in uh, to implement uh, this thing, what next practice supposed to be followed? It has to be center of all conversation. So, what kind of conversations we are doing uh, doing in our project? Can anyone guess? Anyone? What kind of conversation we are uh, having during the project? It's a simple question. Anyone can answer if he or she is part of this session. Deployment of the project maintenance like that. Okay. See, uh, conversation always go uh, goes with respect to discussion and all those stuff, right? Right. So, uh, again, I, I have listed down this many of conversations. So, even even project kickoff meeting, project status meeting, everywhere till uh, daily Scrum meeting. If we are using anything with respect to the domain, uh, with respect to the implementation or development or defining uh, the requirement, all should follow the terms which we have already defined ubiquitous language. We should not uh, deal with any terms which are not part of ubiquitous language, right? Right. So until unless we will not follow this practice, I think we will we will not be able to remove the ambiguity in our develop, uh, entire development phase. Make sense? Or we will, in fact, we will not maintain the scope of our bounded context. And in domain driven design, maintaining scope with respect to the your context is the key key or key key to follow the practice. Make sense?
Okay, uh, ubiquitous language has to evolve uh, uh, over the time. What does that mean? What does that mean? So there are uh, here uh, uh, here there are two things. One uh, evolving with respect to the whatever the existing what we have defined, and uh, second one is uh, what new is coming, right? So I think there is uh, one design principle, uh, Paul uh, principle. Uh, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> principle. Uh, allow extension and don't allow the modification. What is that? What was that? Do you know this thing? There is one principle allow extension, but don't allow modification. Does this uh, is this part of some kind of solid principle or something kind of stuff? <clears throat> okay, so again, uh, so far as uh, there are, uh, there are always two things happens in when your project enhance or it, uh, requirement uh, requirement changes or something, either it requires a change in exist uh, existing uh, existing implementation or it requires the uh, augmentation of requirement, right? So always be uh, always offer a new terminology. Don't offer to change the existing terminology, right? If you require to change existing uh, uh, existing terminology, see it is not uh, it is not that we uh, we should not do, but it is we uh, uh, we should avoid all those things. And uh, if the scenarios are uh, scenario, scenarios are like that that we need to change those terminology, then it has to communicate it uh, in very well manner so that each and every stakeholders are aware that okay if yesterday we are uh, we are talking about the interest now uh, uh, compound interest now it is a cumulative in interest and accordingly we need to update our uh, our artifacts right so a uh, so you can understand a small change in terminology uh, has to impact everywhere so uh, so always uh, always try to avoid existing terminology a change in existing terminology and be comfortable in adding new terminology right so uh, uh, so that uh, so that again ambiguity can be uh, can be uh, uh, can be minimized make sense i hope it makes sense yes yeah. okay so uh, next practice and next practice is supposed to be documentation. So if we have defined, if we have defined, uh, defined ubic at all the terms, uh, term, uh, terms and or terminologies of, of for ubiquitous language, it has to be documented. We should have some glossary, gloss, glossary, with respect to the terms what we have defined, defined. Otherwise, uh, I think. I cannot remember remember uh, remember the crux of the ter uh, terms what we have discussed uh, yesterday. So it has to define and the definition supposed to be simple, simple, crisp, and complete, right? Uh, so that at any point of uh, any point of time or in any phase of development, any stoke stakeholder wants to refer uh, the term meaning of terms or uh, meaning uh, meaning of functionality. And that stakeholder can have same understanding what other stakeholder have today or 10 days back or if in future. So we should have well documented uh, glossary with respect to all the terms. Uh, sample can be anything. You can have this kind of uh, glossary so that anyone can access, anyone can reach to any terms, anyone can understand the meaning or functionality with respect to that term. So documentation or glossary glossary must be there with respect to whatever the terms we have defined and this practice must be part of your development phase and again this should be uh, this should uh, this should handle by either product owner or project manager right make sense yes yeah great Okay, okay. Uh, here, uh, here, there is one term I have used that is anti-corruption layer. 
going to use right because see uh, 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 scope of uh, terminology should be within boundaries and that is pretty simple uh, simple because what uh, 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 if you are dealing what with one functionality or one bounded context you should not much bother about what other other uh, other team is doing with respect to other bounded content you should be very much precise with respect to whatever you are doing with respect to the specific scope of your bounded context if your uh, bounded context uh, is uh, is meant to calculate interest you should be aware of uh, about the uh, about the terminology simple interest Mm, compound interest or any other uh, interest if some other bounded uh, contexts are dealing with bonds let them deal with whatever they are uh, doing there whether uh, uh, whether they are using coupon uh, coupon whether they are using uh, 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 whether they are using a tenure of coupon whether they are using any other ter terminology we should not bother or influence uh, with the other bounded context our scope supposed to be uh, with respect to our bounded uh, bounded context and our ubiquitous language right our language should not be influenced by uh, through the surrounding uh, uh, surrounding team who are dealing with the other bounded context let them do that right uh, make sense i hope you understand what i wanted to uh, want to explain you correct so next, so I, I as I mentioned that uh, there is one more terminology uh, I am putting over is that anti-corruption layer. Are you aware of what what exactly it is? What is and I have explained uh, anti-corruption layer in my previous session. See, uh, 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 as I mentioned that the, uh, there might be other team who, who may working or there is uh, working with respect to other functionality with respect to other bounded context, right? But there. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, there are scenarios when uh, one bounded context may require some relation to other bounded context, right? And other bounded context uh, uh, definitely have uh, the, uh, its own ubiquitous language, and they uh, they uh, they uh, their terms may have same uh, functionality but with respect to the uh, different nom uh, different name for example as i mentioned that i may consider as a compound interest other bounded uh, may consider it as a uh, cumulative uh, interest right so anti corruption layer is a layer between two uh, two uh, two bounded contexts which which works like a interpreter right so uh, so uh, it should like this you, if you can say right all right so uh, so we should have uh, as a part of practice we should have all the mapping with respect to this uh, uh, mapping of this term if uh, for example compound interest map with the cumulative interest right so uh, so uh, there might be n in n number so uh, it will uh, it uh, it will be helpful when uh, when our uh, our bounded context uh, context will deal with the anti corruption layer uh, uh, to get some information or to maintain the relation with respect to other bounded context right so we should have the, so practice is we should have a, a a documented map with respect to the terms we are going uh, we are going uh, we are using in anti corruption layer right make sense Any further understanding if required? Anyone? Okay, hi. Salil, I think hope everything is clear with respect to why I have explained. Are you there, Salil? Okay. Okay. So let us move to the next point. Uh, next point. Uh, what uh, What is supposed to be next point? Definitely bounded context as per our agenda list, right? Okay. So 
we have already defined what, what is bounded context, right? So see, if a bounded context is again a boundary, right? And it uh, it it is supposed to have its own ubiquitous language. That is that is that uh, what we, I can say considered practice with respect to bounded context. It's not I can say base practice. It has to be and go with that, right? All right. So if it is a bounded uh, context, it bounded context has to have some kind of identity, unique identity. I mean to say, it, if it is name, it should be named unique uh, with uh, if you are considering particular domain. It should not have that uh, two bounded context in a, in a domain should have one name, right? Right, so that and that again, it it will uh, it will hamper with respect to the maintaining relationship uh, relationship, defining the anti-corruption layer, and defining uh, defining n numbers of other things. If we are not managing the uniqueness uh, unique uniqueness name with respect to the bounded context, right, right, and uh, and again, if uh, once we, if you have defined. It should not like that uh, after a uh, certain phase, you want to change the name. You define and keep it till uh, the end of life cycle of this your project, right? Perfect. Make sense? Right. So this I already mentioned. So if it is a bounded context, it has to be ubiquitous language. You cannot have bounded context without ubiquitous language. And if you don't have ubiquitous language, don't consider you have missed some best practice. You have actually missed the core of the domain driven design, right? So bounded context, that means it should possess ubiquitous language, right? Next one. Anyone can explain this thing? Anyone? What is autonomy? Basically, it's fundamentally actually it's a, see basically autonomy is a key of bounded uh, context uh, con context uh, that isolate teams from the external dis distractions and isolate models from the unrelated concept so already i have uh, i have explained in a different way different way see if some uh, some your neighborhood team is dealing with kind of bounded context with dealing with some bo uh, bond related uh, investment instru instrument and you are dealing with some kind of say a saving account uh, bound uh, uh, related uh, bounded uh, context you should not get influenced by uh, by what they are uh, uh, what they are dealing with or uh, and what they are developing with and what kind of terminology they are using with that you should uh, uh, your bounded context have your own autonomy your uh, each and uh, each and every uh, every component of your bounded context supposed to be supposed to be independent with respect to the other other uh, other bounded context it should not be that if i'm calculating uh, calculating interest uh, calculating interest i am supposed to uh, uh, supposed to call method of other uh, other bounded context to calculate the interest i'm just using here kind of uh, kind of uh, endpoint and i'm getting no this should not be happen every uh, your or um, if, for any bounded uh, um, context uh, complete autonomy is required i'm not saying that relationship is supposed to be ignored see there are <clears throat> The, uh, there are occasion where you need to maintain the relation with respect to the different boundary. For example, if you if you have if you have implemented calculate uh, calculating interest interest component uh, percentage comp uh, interest component is always dynamic and it is always part of some kind of configuration. So there are chances that you need to have relation with respect to some bounded context which can dynamically provide the interest or <coughs> interest on the basis of that. Uh, uh, calculation supposed to be happened. So I'm not saying that, <clears throat> sorry. I'm not saying uh, that you should, uh, you should ignore the relationship. I'm saying that 
whatever operation you are uh, your bounded context is doing that is supposed to have autonomy it should not have any influence uh, from other bounded context it should not uh, it should not have any anything which depends on the other um, bounded context in in uh, kind of uh, in, in it in a wrong manner right if you need some kind of uh, values you define some kind of uh, relationship get get the values and do your operation right make sense <clears throat> yes or no next one so bounded context should manage the relationship among them through set of patterns manage this relationship see again uh, in domain driven design there are set of patterns defined to maintain the relations i think uh, th uh, this uh, this patterns i have covered in my pre uh, 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 previous session but uh, let me uh, let me give you uh, some uh, some kind some kind of sample uh, what kind of uh, patterns they are so see partnership is again a type of pattern share kernel is again type of pattern customer supplier is anti corruption they are pattern through that you can maintain the relation you can share the data you can even share the operations also right so if you want uh, if you want uh, want a relationship with respect to other bounded context you have to follow the patterns you cannot uh, you cannot go uh, tell the uh, owner of other bounded uh, context or uh, or some developer ke boss please uh, uh, please make uh, make this method public i want to use this method to fulfill my uh, to fulfill my functionality no that is not the uh, approach you have to follow the follow particular pattern to maintain the relation and to uh, maintain the relation to fulfill the purpose of your bounded context make sense uh, any clarity is needed who has raised the hand it just missed money is um, money is, is that clear ankit be interactive man yeah right yes, no if it is clear uh, if it is clear uh, if it is clear then it is it is really good but if you have even a 1% of uh, percent of doubt just ask it might possible that other uh, other audience will have more clarity with respect to uh, with respect to discussion uh, discussing your doubt right okay okay yeah okay perfect so uh bounded co context must have explicitly set boundaries physical manifestations such as code base and database so what does that mean let me uh, let me uh, put one uh, uh, diagram over here this thing All right All right so uh, what are you uh, seeing over here uh, we have so, uh, some uh, subdomains and uh, uh, these do subdomain have some bounded context right if you see uh, f first uh, first from the left first from the left there are two bounded context and they are say, uh, sharing one database rest all have one bounded context and uh, they are having uh, one database for e that particular bounded context right right so uh, so here we uh, we should be very much clear with respect to we want to share some kind of database or we want to uh, uh, share some kind of code base so that clarity supposed to be the, uh, uh, supposed to be there so uh, supposed to be there and accordingly accordingly that uh, that has to be part of the relationship and, uh, uh, design that okay if i want to share uh, share i want to maintain uh, the common database uh, across particular particular bounded context this is the relationship what we are maintaining and uh, and this uh, these are the documentation and these are the terminology we are going to follow with respect to uh, uh, with respect to uh, defining uh, the boundaries of any code base or any database i hope you uh, you uh, understand what i want to say right 
so in in first in uh, first subdomain there are two bounded contacts and they have shared one database and uh, definitely they must have defined some kind of some kind of um, implementation or by following uh, following the valid pattern with respect to sharing the database and rest all uh, rest all subdomain uh, subdomain sub uh, bounded contacts have one database with respect to one bounded context so uh, we should be very much clear with respect to uh, with respect to sharing or not sharing uh, database code base or sch uh, schemas and that has to be part of right patterns make sense Okay, bounded contact has to protect the integrity of the domain model. So again, if I if I uh, if I I want you know, I want to let you guess that okay, um, mostly where uh, where the integrity uh, integrity compromises most of the time where integrity compromises. Any guesswork? Any guesswork? Be interactive. I'm honestly telling be interactive. Otherwise, the complete one hour will be wasted. Okay, so most of the time integrity compromise uh, while maintaining relations uh, relations with respect to bounded context uh, contact. See, uh, see what uh, what happened is uh, there are a lot of chances, uh, lot of chances uh, happen uh, happen where even uh, uh, we are not maintaining uh, 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 we, we we are not maintaining the unambiguity while we are even defining the anti-corruption layer, right? There are a lot of chances it happens that for uh, one terminology in one bounded uh, con uh, context have two different terminology in different uh, bounded context. So uh, to uh, to maintain ambiguity or integrity, we need to be very much careful uh, careful while we are maintaining the relationship with the other bounded context, right? Yeah. And <clears throat> Uh, and this relationship is nothing but uh, the different name is context mapping uh, context mapping and we should be uh, we should be very much clear with respect to this context mapping and the associated documentation with respect to this con uh, context mapping so uh, i'm not sure that how how you people are aware with respect to a uh, term called context mapping so if you are not aware then context mapping is nothing nothing but a, a tool or you can say a strategy that allows developer and domain expert to identify the relationship between bounded context and the relationship between the teams that are responsible for them so again i'm saying so if you want to maintain the integrity the uh, the most common bottleneck is the relationship between the uh, uh, bounded context so if you can maintain a relationship rightly with the right context mapping i think you are done done right so uh, so uh, crux of this practice is maintain the relationship with very cautiously with the right pattern and with the with right context mapping right make sense anything anything with respect to uh, 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 base practices in bounded context because we are done with respect to bounded context considering you people are all expert <laughs> let me move, move further aggregates definition is pretty clear with respect to you as we initially we have already understood what the aggregates are in with respect to domain driven design so uh, so see aggregate is uh, something which is you can say more more or completely kind of technical artifact artifact so that you have to implement physically you know, physically while, while you are dealing and aggregate is something something which which is flowing everywhere everywhere uh, while dealing with your business while dealing with your business so ag uh, uh, so uh, at we, as, as we already understood aggregate is uh, majorly a set of entities and uh, and value objects and business rules right so if it consists of entities and uh, value object and implementation of business room we should try 
aggregates as small as possible as small so uh, try uh, don't uh, uh, don't make it kind of um, ball of mud it should be as small as small and try to break your functionality so that you can make your aggregates uh, small so what is the benefit of smaller aggregate can anyone explain uh, give me the point uh, direction uh, with respect to ben benefit of smaller aggregates anyone i need uh, at least i need answer of this uh, thing anyone guess what is also fine right or wrong doesn't matter what are the aggregates uh, it is basically a collection of the entities object collection fine and why it is required small why um, my why it should be small what, what benefit uh, holistically we can get by making i get small See, I'm again. I'm just uh, reiterating. Aggregates are something. Uh, some uh, they are the uh, technical artifacts. So you need to think uh, with respect to technology only. So if aggregates are small, what kind of benefits you will get? See, it's a pretty simple. Smaller aggregates makes a system faster and more reliable. Because it is it it is having less data. It has it is having less size, right? Makes sense. So uh, uh, so if you are making large aggregate, they can lead to complex transactional scenarios and performance issue, right? So if if your aggregate is small, for example, if you want uh, if if you are creating aggregate uh, for the interest, you are you are you are having uh, you are having uh, you are having entities with respect to uh, calculating interest. And you have value a value object with respect to the interest, uh, interest and the uh, interest principal and uh, 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 the yield. If so, it's a clear cut, no ambiguity, nothing uh, uh, limited, uh, uh, limited, uh, limited size, and uh, and also uh, also it doesn't affect uh, while uh, while dealing with the event uh, event driven uh, architecture. Just just pass in the event. Uh, push into the event or topic, it throughs. In case of large aggregate, again it affects the performance. It of aff it affects the concurrency. Concurrency. It affects even the DB operations also because because when we are dealing with the aggregate, the complete aggregate preserved in the database. It is not uh, uh, it is not something that uh, some part some part of aggregate is uh, we are saving. If we are saving. We are saving aggregate for each and every time, right? So, uh, so to make the system efficient, to make the system uh, less complex uh, and simple, try to make aggregates as small as possible. Second one, design, uh, design around the business transaction. What does that mean? So, see. Uh, an aggregate should encapsulate all the data and behavior required to perform specific business transaction. So, aggregate supposed to be complete with respect to the uh, the demand of the particular uh, business requirement uh, requirement, and it should design uh, design uh, design in surround of particular requirement only. It should not again. It should not deviate with respect to the requirement. It should not have anything extra or anything less, right? So if uh, again, if I am having uh, having uh, 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 the boundaries with respect to cre creating order or processing the order, the or uh, it should uh, the aggregate should have all the functionality with respect to the required transaction to uh, transaction with respect to the functionality of order. Right. So uh, to try to uh, so in this scenario, the practice supposed to be try to achieve the complete completeness with respect to the demanded functionality uh, uh, functionality in in one aggregate itself. Make sense. Understood. What does that mean? 
see uh, again uh, uh, see how you can reference the other ad aggregates Ob you can uh, you can uh, you can uh, reference directly by object reference or you can have the id of id of that object right so which one supposed to be better having reference of that object or having id of that uh, ob object or aggregate what should be better in according to you It's a very simple answer. Anyone who knows Java, anyone who knows .NET, anyone who know, knows C, C++ can answer this thing. Holding a identity is better or holding a reference, a complete reference of an object is better. Okay, see, uh, see if you are holding identity, you are just holding the identity of the particular object it's kind of lazy load, loading loading so so you are not having any 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 data with respect to other aggregates so when whenever you are moving with the identity you are uh, uh, very lightweight and it's kind of lazy simply lazy loading whenever it is required it it loads uh, it lo it loads uh, loads uh, loads the aggregate as and when required and uh, accordingly it move further so uh, so uh, so it's like it, it it will be light in weight it will be light in processing and it will be li light uh, light while it is uh, it is in network right so uh, always re uh, reference other aggregate identity not uh, not by its uh, instance or not by its reference right invariance so again product the business environment in invariant so what is the in fact uh, linguistic meaning of this uh, uh, this uh, this approach what is supposed to be if if you want to uh, protect the business invariant what is expected out of here Just respond, Salil. Have, do you have any idea, Rishika? Webo, Sujit. Okay. Uh, let me uh, let me come. See, basically, a business variant is a rule or constraint in the business domain that must be always true, right? and uh, it it is supposed to be the resp res responsibility of aggregate who should take care of that right and how aggregate should take care aggregate should take care with the help of entities so it is not something that uh, uh, it is not something that any uh, if some uh, some uh, constraint or some kind of business need is there your aggregate should not be capable to handle that if if any constraint or any functionality is required with respect to brd or business requirement it has to be protected and is it has to be part of aggregate aggregate right any further uh, further further we need to maintain uh, to uh, protect the business invariant there is one more uh, practice we need to follow while protecting the business variable. The aggregate root should be the uh, should ensure ensure uh, the uh, consi uh, consistency of change to the uh, data within the aggregate and protect business rule. What does that mean? So any operation, any operations required to uh, required to be carried out with respect to aggregate, the entry point supposed to be ag uh, aggregate aggregate root i hope you understand uh, what is aggregate rule see uh, aggregate rule is i you can say it's a top of uh, it's kind of uh, top uh, top of aggregate you can say the uh, if you if you are implementing the physical uh, the final concrete aggregate you can say it's a top ag abstraction of that aggregate where it it is the only entry point with respect to any request or any change or anything so aggregate is a kind of entry point with respect to any aggregate and 
aggregate root has the complete responsible responsibility uh, to protect the invariants of business right so uh, so uh, mo moral of the story the best practice supposed to be uh, supposed to protect in business environment in invariant uh, should be uh, so that uh, in invariant is the entry point has to be aggregate root and there is uh, there should be no uh, no uh, no loosely uh, loose entry point so uh, supposed to be provided uh, no illogical relationship should, should be maintained with respect to uh, other uh, other bounded context make sense second point eventual consistency do you know what is eventual consistency and uh, see uh, there is there uh, there is one thing uh, uh, for bounded con uh, bounded context or aggregate is they need to maintain the internal consistency and there is one more responsibility for aggregate is to maintain the consistency of holistically for the domain domain how uh, let us uh, let us understand this through a diagram so there is uh, there is a command op operation a uh, is required to be complete uh, uh, with respect to triggering the operation b right so here there are two uh, two possibility either a operation a is successful or operation a is failure right so if operation a is successful the eventually what is going to happen eventually operation b is going to be triggered so it is uh, it is uh, it is the responsibility of operation a to main, uh, uh, maintain eventual consistency by by defining the right relationship between uh, between uh, operation a and operation b or uh, operation a in one aggregate and operation b of another aggregate uh, aggregate so it is it is uh, it is very much required to maintain the eventual consistency eventual consistency uh, here operation a and b uh, and operation a and a, operation b the eventual consistency is operation b which which depends on operation success of operation a and b so uh, so here operation uh, aggregate where operation a occurs ha uh, has to maintain the eventual consistent consistency by maintaining by maintaining the right relationship between the aggregate where the operation b uh, is supposed to be carried out make sense Yes, sir, Bengal. Sorry, I am a little bit. Avoid data duplication, right? So again, uh, let me put uh, the, uh, uh, this example again, right? <clears throat> See, here we uh, here we are uh, we are having one common database for two uh, bounded con uh, uh, context. One is pricing, and another is booking. Booking. So. In any of bounded uh, context, there are chances of having duplicate data. There are chance, either duplicated duplicate data or useless data. Suppose, uh, uh, suppose even pricing bounded context, uh, 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 pricing bound uh, bounded context picks all the data of booking bounded context. In that scenario, there are a lot of chances, lot of chances. Uh, of duplicate data because uh, definitely browser, pricing bounded uh, context may have uh, data with respect to the subdomain or uh, subdomain or, uh, uh, do, or core domain data and similarly same data exists in booking bounded context so uh, so it is a, uh, it should be very much careful when uh, when one bounded context or one aggregate maintains the data so uh, if uh, if uh, if there are scenario where uh, 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 where there there is a probability of having duplicate data aggregate has to be uh, de definition of aggregate has to be in a way so that that can be avoided and if data is duplication that may imp uh, that may affect the functionality and that may affect the performance also right so it is always recommended to avoid duplicate and unnecessary data. So, yeah, so uh, so domain. If if you want to go with the domain entry one, you have you should go. You must go with the event driven architecture because change in one aggregate 
may may require some kind of uh, effect on the other aggregates in the domain so once there is any change uh, happens in aggregate you have to push that change in uh, in form of event and particular event supposed to be captured uh, uh, through the associated aggregates and they can implement associated change in uh, their their state right so uh, so that uh, so that changes can be maintained and accordingly history of aggregate also can be maintained uh, maintained so it is always prefer to have event driven architecture uh, architecture with respect to uh, with respect to uh, ddd and with respect to any change in aggregates right so if you do, uh, if you if you have any ab uh, other approach uh, apart from event driven you can go with but i am sure it is going to be very much complicated it is going to main, uh, it is going to be complicated in terms of maintaining with uh, relation with respect to other uh, other aggregate it it is going to give you challenge uh, to maintain uh, maintain history of the aggregates it is going to uh, give you the challenge with respect to maintain um, uh, maintain, uh, maintain uh, the communication with respect to the different bounded context right so always go with the event driven architecture it will solve lot uh, it will solve many problems uh, many problem by its own right make sense I'm done with the aggregates. I'm going to uh, move uh, to, uh, to the next point, right? So entities. So you, you, most of you people are aware uh, with respect. To, I will take five, ten minutes more because uh, these two points are uh, pretty small, right? I hope you people are having that much of time, right? Is that okay? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. So uh, you most people uh, are aware of entity uh, entities. It is it is not much different uh, different than the normal uh, no, normal ORM implementation. Object and structure uh, may be kind of like that uh, similar only. So but uh, here you have to follow one identity with respect to each entity. This identity helps to maintain the history history of the changes, right? You can you cannot have uh, you cannot have history without any identity, right? Entity uh, must have one identity for uh, uh, with respect to uh, uh, with respect to uh, the any item, whether it's a product, whether it's order, whether anything. So identity has to be there, right? Okay. So equality or non-equality should be with respect to identity. If two order are same that uh, that can be defined only with respect to their uh, their the value of their identity if two ids of two orders are same that means two uh, uh, the complete two orders can be considered as same right only id needs to be checked whether they are same or not makes sense Entities are almost mutable. Why it is mutable? I have already mentioned that history and history can be maintained. Uh, state of the uh, entity can be maintained through identifier. So what happens if the entities are immutable? If you change any value, again it will create new object. The complete uh, complete state uh, 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 state will be lost uh, if we are making making the entity immutable we cannot maintain state we cannot maintain history we cannot uh, uh, we cannot track the uh, track the changes uh, happen in in the entities entities in during the entire flow or workflow so entities has to be has to be mutable but there are, there may be some scenario where immutable are fine but in the, uh, all those scenarios when entity doesn't require any changes they are kind of constant in that scenario you can uh, you can uh, pick immutable entities but most of the scenario entities has to be mutable yeah so uh, okay so 
what are the business logic business logic supposed to be constraint supposed to be some kind of calculation some kind of uh, uh, some kind of validation so all those business logic supposed to be part of entities you cannot pick any other place you should not pick any other place if you are picking uh, uh, picking any other place to implement the business logic that means you are generating uh, complexity and you are decoupling decoupling your entity with respect to its core uh, core business logic and uh, this this decoupling is not the good practice uh, good practice it it is something which is which this decoupling increase the complexity right so business logic supposed to be part of entities and those business logic can be constant can be uh, can be calculation or can uh, can be any uh, anything which uh, which uh, which is specified in your brds right okay don't uh, don't uh, we should we should uh, we should not uh, have strict practice of putting getter setter uh, uh, for everything in the entities uh, this is uh, this is again to prevent the integrity of uh, your aggregates so for example uh, what uh, what if you have set the uh, setter method of id or identifier anyone can change the uh, anyone can change uh, change the identifier and complete uh, complete integrity of that aggregate uh, get loose nobody knows uh, nobody nobody can track what happens uh, happens with respect to uh, with respect to uh, uh, the previous operation no one can un uh, understand uh, understand that uh, understand with respect to the equality of uh, uh, equality of uh, two entities right so to maintain the integrity we should be very cautious when we are setting getter and setter with respect to the entities so if you want uh, if you want to consider identifier let us put them with respect to the constructor and uh, and we cannot uh, provide the setter method we can just provide the getter method to them so uh, so to maintain the integrity we should be very much cautious when we are uh, defining the getter and setter you need to create the association between the various entities in your system again uh, again uh, uh, there are a lot of chances there are two entities uh, have some kind of re 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 relation so you need to maintain that relation in a way so that uh, so that either they can be uh, can be within the aggregate and outside the aggregate when you are uh, uh, you have uh, relations across uh, across across the aggregates you need to uh, pick the uh, right pattern uh, right pattern with respect to ddd and within aggregate also you have to follow the right uh, uh, right approaches or right design pattern to communicate between two entities so uh, so whatever the association you are maintaining with respect to entities be cautious so that you can maintain uh, uh, maintain the integrity you can maintain the uniqueness or you can maintain uh, the uh, trans uh, trans uh, transactional uh, based practices with respect to the entities right <clears throat> yeah so this is the example uh, which i am supposed to give you to maintain uh, to uh, to maintain the associate association so here here we have two bounded contracts we we will have two entities with respect to pricing and with respect to uh, with respect to booking and we are uh, we are having re uh, we need to maintain uh, the relation uh, because we are maintaining the common database we are maintaining com common database because there are some kind of business need is there where we should have common values between two entities right so and that common values resides in database so association of uh, two entities can uh, 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 can be possible and can be maintained with the right approaches right value object this is pretty simple uh, pretty simple uh, pretty simple entities are mutable it should be immutable why it is immutable because uh, any value object doesn't require any kind of state tracking any kind of changes it uh, it just hold the values for uh, uh, for for the moment if 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 i want to uh, uh, create a value object for name first name second name last name that's it so uh, value object supposed to be immutable so if you want to com uh, compare try to implement the uh, logic to compare here there is no id with respect to any value object if you want to com uh, compare either compare with the all the values or you create the logic on the basis of what you want to uh, consider 
two value object are equal or not equal okay so this is pretty simple so uh, if you if you want to uh, if you want to have any method in in your value object whether whether you want to you want to fetch the middle name or we want to fetch the last name those operations should not affect anywhere uh, anywhere in the value object or in any system so there should not be side effect of any uh, any uh, any method uh, method uh, method which you want to uh, uh, want to use with respect to the value object if you want to get uh, uh, first name uh, there should be a method which give you first name and which should not affect the other uh, other uh, other values of that value object so that's a pretty simple so we should have some method uh, functions in value object but that should not affect in the rest in the uh, in the rest of area of the value object or any other uh, areas of the domain right so this uh, and, and for value object i think uh, there are no much more uh, much more uh, base practices they are the standard practices which are available in, in different uh, different uh, approaches also so now i am here ending uh, ending my session with respect to the base practices uh, for domain driven there are many more base practices but my time doesn't allow so i have picked this uh, five points and i thought to re render uh, this knowledge in front of you i hope you have enjoyed and i think and, and this is done for the day thank you very much to everyone himanshu over to you thank you bigya uh, guys, uh, lastly, I just like to quickly check if you are having any queries, then uh, this is the right platform to get your queries resolved. I guess no one is having any queries. Fine. Uh, I ju I'll just like to add one more thing. Uh, lastly, uh, since we are having this. Uh, session uh, addressed by Megya himself, who happens to be a very senior resource of our organization. So uh, I think if you're not responding to such sessions where uh, the presenter is only asking you to uh, at least say yes or no. So that's a big disrespect, I, I think so. So uh, I request you all to be present to the attendees who have attended this session that please do make sure to you know respond to the presenter whosoever is taking the session for you guys. Thank you, thank you, Abigya, and thank you uh, to all of you for attending the session. Uh, we'll just uh, be rolling out the feedback form, and we hope that you'll be filling the feedback forms for us. Thank you.